Hi everyone and welcome to my first ever YouTube tutorial. So today I'll be showing you guys how to use the Roro brush tool in After Effects to create the perfect mask. So this has been highly requested every day. I get this on the daily people in my DMs asking how I make my mask. So I just thought it would be easier if I just show it to you guys on video because I'm just really bad at explaining through DMs. Um, it's really easy if you're a beginner in After Effects. Don't be intimidated. It's not. It's not that hard. Uh, just follow along closely and I'm sure you'll be an expert in no time. So as you can see, this is a clip I have here from my recent edit. As you can see, I masked Ariana and she's moving and because of that I can put whatever background I want without having the original background. I'm going to show you guys how to recreate that. So this is a pre-comp that I have currently. I always do pre-comps um, when I'm editing, I just find it easier and it makes my timeline more clean. So when I double click on the pre-comp, it opens up all the other layers for that certain effect. So I just prefer working like that, but that totally depends uh, what you want, it's not really that important. So all you need is to have a layer on After Effects and you're going to go at the top here. There is a Roto Brush tool, so you're going to click on that, so just make sure you're at the first, first frame because that's going to be easier as you start if you start in the middle you'll only mask after where you where you are on the timeline and not before just make sure that you're at the first clip it'll just be way easier for you and then you're going to double click on the frame and that's going to open up a new layer well not a new layer but like a new screen and this is called the roto brush tool screen and as you can see i have a little green dot on my screen and that's my mouse and the mouse basically turned into a positive brush and if I hold option on my MacBook I'm not sure what it is for Windows but I think it could be like one of those at the bottom um, it's now removing so kind of like a simple concept so basically you're just gonna go ahead and select what you want so this is like an actual paint brush you just click on the on the clip and then you can see there's a purple line that shows around i'm trying to explain this for like beginners so if you already know this i'm sorry i'm just trying to like explain it um as if someone really has no clue about this and so you're gonna click and select everything as you can see and if you accidentally do like a line like that and you don't want this little area you can either command z or you can just um, go, like I said, with the option tool, and then when it's red, you color it and it'll remove. So, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the preview tool on the right here. And what you can do is, as you can see over here, there's a little button that says next frame. You click on that and that will go to the next frame. So you can see if there's any change in the mask, the line. Um, for me, I didn't want to do the white hair here. I just feel like it would look weird. At the bottom, there's also this little things you can click on to see what the mask look like. And it's going to look really rough at first. You're going to have weird edges, but don't worry about that. You're going to fix it in the end. So I'm just going to continue with the arrow. And I'm going to click and look throughout my frames. I actually think this part here looks kind of weird. Make sure if you want to like fix something to go back to your first frame because that'll affect all the other ones after. If you correct it right at that frame, it won't affect the one previously. So you want to make sure to always go back if you have like a really important detail to fix. And so I'm just going to continue going on the side like that, going to the next frames and look if everything looks good. I can see at the bottom over here, some of the selection has been removing so i'm gonna go back on my timeline and look at which point um that started the key for this is really to just be patient and to really like take your time if you want to make it bigger or smaller just hold command and you go up and down and it'll remove it so i'm just going to go ahead to the line next and so i'm just going to continue doing that i might uh fast forward it just so doesn't take too long, but I'm just going to go by each frame and make sure everything is selected. Uh, 
Okay, now this is an important part about the rotate brush. So as you can see, as I was going through my next frames, um, to this one, the whole mask just disappears. If I can go ahead if I want and color it again, but it'll look different than, let me show you. So before it looked like that, and now it looks like that. So as you can see, there's a bit of movement over here. And when you see the whole mask later, you'll see that when it changes from that to that, it just makes it look messy, you know? So what you want to do, I'm just going to click Control Z to remove that. So what you want to do is open up at the bottom of your screen. You have a little timeline as well. I'm just going to zoom in on that. And as you can see at the bottom here, I have this little area here that's a bit more gray than the rest of the timeline. That is where your mask is. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the end because as you can see over here, it stopped working and that's because the mask ended here. So you're going to make sure it's really at the end, end of your clip. You can use the next frame and you're just going to drag that. So I'm just going to make it even bigger so you can really see clearly what I mean. So this is the end. So you're just going to drag it even like a little frame after, it doesn't matter. And you're going to see that it's going to load and the mask is going to reappear. So that's just going to make sure that the whole mask is kind of like the same thing and nothing changes drastically. Now, I think we're kind of done with the general selection. So I'm just going to click again on the little purple line. So as you can see, um, it looks really messy, but that's fine because we're going to fix it. So what you're going to do is look at the tools on the left here. These are really important. So you have feather contrast, shift edge, and reduce chatter. So for the feathering, it basically makes the line smoother. So I'm gonna put this at like around 50 looks good. You can go like as much as you want. It doesn't matter. Like I say 50, but you don't need to put it at 50 exactly. Just go with your eye and look what um, seems nicer. And then another one that I like using sometimes is the shift edge. And that just does a little outline around the mask. It kind of looks like a cool effect. Uh, it just depends really like on your mask, what you want it to look like. And if I click play, as you can see, but it already looks way better and the edges are really smooth. And so then um, you can leave it as that if you want, but a tool I recently found, which helped me a lot is the refine edge tool now this is really for the final step when you're done with your mask and you like like you selected the main basic part of it so you're gonna oh, the way that i changed that is by doing option w on my macbook it says it right there i don't know if you see but it says ref refine edge tool drag over alpha edge option drags erase edge refinement option w so that's how you change them from the roto brush and the refine edge tool. Again, if you have a window, so it's, it'll tell you what key to click. Okay, so what you're gonna do when you have the refine edge tool selected, you're gonna click on command, hold, and then make the brush a little bit bigger. I say like this is fine. And then make sure you have the first frame again. And you're gonna go ahead and trace around where there's little hairs. So that will basically help you have that smooth edge. So as you can see, it turns it into an X-ray vision. If you can't see that, it might be because you don't, you don't have the render thing selected. So as you can see, it's turning it into an X-ray vision. So basically everything that is white will appear on the mask. And that's how you're going to get these really crisp, uh, these really crisp edges. So basically you want to do this everywhere that there is hair just to get that smoother edge. So as you can see, it'll apply it for you everywhere. So as you see, it moved with the mask. So if you go back to your first composition, you'll see that the hair now looks very feathered and just way smoother. So if I go back and I click play, you'll see that it looks way smoother. I'm usually going to go and fix a few things.
now there is another if i move over here there's a bit of blue popping in her hair so what you could do is just go with the um, option w just go on the mask and remove that and it's not there anymore so it should be gone and all i did left for this clip to make it uh fit better is just play with the color curves and add in a bit of red a little bit of blue to get that more purplish tone lower the green and that's basically it so that's how you get a perfect mask now I hope this helped and if you have any other questions or if you'd like any other tutorial you can comment down below and I'm probably gonna do some more of these. I really like helping you guys. And don't forget to check out my Instagram. It's Noemi Edit. Link will be in the caption if you want to see more of my edits.